Let me make sure. There we go. Live now. What's up, y'all? This is Vocab Malone. Chilling with my main man, Jay the producer. Yep. Here we are, part two tonight. We're gonna get at this GMS blog. So tonight's part two of the worst of the worst. And what we're saying is one West Camps are bad enough, but GMS takes it to that gutter level times 10. Hmm. And we got a blog, a website created by a GMS member that really shows that. So with that, brother Jay, you used to be in IUIC, not GMS, but you had something you wanted to say as to why you think a show like this is important to do. Yeah. Um, number one is because uh, the other camps think the same. They think the same thing. The difference is, is that, like, you know, Vocab just said that GMS take it to the gutter level. They're, they're more they're more out in the open with everything that they think and that they feel, uh, no matter how, you know, perverted the thought may be. They, they lay it out there um, and they stand by it. The other camps... They'll be holding on to the same type of teachings, uh, but they won't go as far as putting the artwork out there or or talking about it like that in the street in such a blunt way. They're more concerned right. about their image and all that kind of stuff. So uh, this 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 deal with GMS because it's their material that they put out, but uh, but it also translate over to uh, the other camps as well that share the same doctrines. So brother Jay, when you first saw this blog, when I first seen the link and showed it to you, what'd you first think? Just general thoughts when I when I sent you this link. Um. Well. <laughs> First, I had no re man. I was just like, I, I didn't. Well, I definitely didn't expect what I saw for sure. Um, really, so shocking even to you? Yeah, it was shocking to me because you know, of course, I was in IOC and they're, they're more concerned about their image. So this type of stuff wouldn't be something you would find on their websites or something. Um, and so uh, when I when I saw this, I know that you know they were out there saying some crazy stuff in the streets, but to see that you know they published the materials and all that kind of stuff with with what they're talking about, putting imagery with it. Um, you kind of see how how far the mind go or carry you in this, this type of doctrine uh, and, and this heresy or whatever case is. And when you brothers and sisters see these pictures, the best the best thing you could do is when you look at these things, think about Christ and be like, would Christ ever think like this? And if Christ was an artist, would he ever draw it? And then that let you know whether or not somebody is operating in the, in, in the spirit of Christ um, by the things that you guys are going to see. Psalm ninety four sixteen says, "Who will rise up for me against the wicked?" Who will stand for me against those who practice iniquity? Ezekiel chapter 3 verses 18 and 19 says, If I say to the wicked, you shall surely die, and you give him no warning, nor speak to warn the wicked from his wicked way in order to save his life, that wicked person shall die from his iniquity, but his blood I will require at your hand. But if you warn the wicked, and he does not turn from his wickedness or from his wicked way, he shall die from his iniquity, but you shall have delivered your soul. Isaiah 5 20 says, Woe to those who call evil good and good evil, who put darkness for light and light for darkness, who put bitter for sweet and sweet for bitter. And here's what's going on. We're trying to stand as we can as men who want to be like Jesus. Not saying we get there. I mean, hey, man, I'll be honest. Some of these pictures could have come out of the darkest recesses of my mind when I'm thinking that sinful way, perhaps, right? But to celebrate it, to champion it, to say this is God's will. That's where the perversion comes in. That's where you see Isaiah 5, 20. Woe to you, GMS, who call evil good and good evil. Woe to you, the artist of this blog, YT Politics, who puts darkness for light and light for darkness. And woe to you, Tahar, and the other two men who are the elders of GMS, who put bitter for sweet and sweet for bitter. And that's what we're trying to do here tonight. So I'll read about me and just slide into the, um, the, uh, the thing. So YT Politics. <clears throat> Excuse me. This is the author of all these images. This is about me section here on, the, on this web, website it says I believe that the so-called blacks, African-American slaves, Native Americans and Latinos with Mayan descent make up the 12 lost tribes of Israel. The people over there in Israel are not the real Jews, but are converts to Judaism whose lineage go back to the Khazars, a.k.a. the Edomites. So the one thing I brought in part one, for those that haven't seen it, is number one, pay attention to how he began it. He said, I believe that the so-called blacks, African-American slaves, Native American slaves, and Latinos with Mayan descent uh, make up the 12 lost tribes of Israel. But then when he moves to the ones that he's claiming is the false Jews, he says, the people over there in Israel are not the real Jews, but are converts to Judaism. So he believes he's one, you know, just by belief, but he knows that they're not the Jews, right? So then it says, all so-called white people whose lineage go back to the biblical Edomites are the damn devil, Revelations 2 and 9. I know thy works and tribulations and poverty, but thou art rich, and I know the blasphemy of them which say they are Jews and are not, but are the synagogue of Satan, which is another misquoted scripture that, that these guys butcher all the time. 
the solid purpose of this the so um the solid purpose of this blog is to wake up the real jews israelites in time for the kingdom of heaven which will begin at the world war three yahweh jesus will gather his elect of israel from the four corners of the earth and save them from the nuclear destruction and, and establish a new kingdom on earth with king david that will last for ages of Amon. And all of the other nations that survived World War III will be slaves in the kingdom of Israel, not not just you damn Edomites, right? You can profile and them probably the only words I will repeat that my, my conscience will allow me to re repeat. Because hey, you know what? Even though um, you know, reading through that's crazy. First of all, it's interesting. The author YT Politics. It's interesting. You know, he says about me, but there's really nothing about him here. He talks more about the fake Jews and the Edomites. It's not, it's not really an about me section. What it really is, is actually, though, helpful to have GMS's eschatology in writing. Right. See, because, you know, Hebrew Israelism is really an oral culture. Everything's right. spoken of and recorded on video and a lecture and this and that. You got some books here and there, but that's not the strong suit. Because the strong suit's not the power of the pen in this movement. It's the power of the tongue, right? And so, But it's interesting to see this guy actually put it, like, in writing. And it's helpful because you can go through and read this. This is what GMS teaches about what the end times will, will be and what's going to go down in the final kingdom. And, uh, you know, along those lines, I might repeat some of the words, by the way, not all of them, but, but I might repeat a few more than Brother Jay for humorous effect. I didn't write this, but right under there where it says a profile, look at the next thing and it says the kingdom. <laughs> He's a lion. Drunk lion, man. <laughs> He's a drunk lion. He got a little, a little fabric. It looked like he got after a GMS member's rough sack, uh, knapsack or something. Well, in his mouth still. Yeah. Yeah, with that crooked, crusty crown. <laughs> He's Man, while eating a leaf. Wow. Yeah. Oh, it's a leaf. Okay. Yeah, that's what it look like. Yeah, it's with that's man. That's that's scar. Scar uh, mixed with yeah, that. Yeah, that is scar. <laughs> He's all backwards, man. We got. All man. right, but let's let's keep on going down. And oh, by the way, what is this weird picture? Yo, man, it says Esau's propaganda machine of Hollywood. Now, if you notice, there's a little arrow button on there. I'm just curious what yeah. what this video is about. This is the first time for us all, people. Yeah, but this dude has a lot of videos as well where he puts his images. I'm sorry. Man, so this GMS is big on what Hollywood does and doesn't say. I don't know what this. Are those UFOs? Yeah, that was a huge UFO. Oh, my God. Look at Tosa. That was ghetto. Bye bye, black sheep, man. <laughs> that was the blessing that was given to him. All right, now it's about to get crazy, everybody. Yeah. Uh, I don't want to read this thing about Gentiles. You can see it right there. But I do want to look at the destruction of the so-called black man. Can you click on that, bro? Because it's just too much classic. Yeah. Oh, it's a video, too? Uh, <laughs> oh, my goodness. Yeah, I want to talk about the destruction of the so-called black man. All right, that's good enough. You get the idea. You can pause that. Oh, it's it's moving. Yeah, I stepped hey, forward. This. Hey, hey, pause it. That guy's name is Daquam. You see that? Welcome aboard, Daquam. You're oh. okay. Boss application. Anyway, oh, how... I like his shoes, the lady says. Right. He's off Dennis Rodman in that. Hey. Yeah, that doesn't like Dennis Rodman. Hey, let me ask you, uh, since this, that boss is an application, do you think members of GMS, when they go to fill out a job application, do they put Hebrew is their life or ethnicity? <laughs> I don't think so. Actually, that's a moot question. They don't fill out job applications. Oh. Ooh. Ooh. <laughs> wow. How much money for this Naka? Oh, holy Baphomet. Jennifer Hudson, you're on your way of becoming my best servant. Next to Jay-Z, of course. <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh, man. Everything's drawn except that car. <laughs> yeah, I know. He just threw a car in there. <laughs> a Lamborghini's too advanced for paint. Yeah. <laughs> All right, man. So, uh, by the way, you see GMS's real anti-female sentiment coming out in this joint. Yeah. Genetically modified food. FG. DNA. DNA. Whoa, hold on. This is actually a big deal, guys. A very, very big deal. I'm about to tell you why. Okay, you ready? This is one of the only times you will see a one Wester actually speak about DNA. <laughs> oh, no. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Because they ain't too much on listening to what DNA got to say. I'll make food much better. Hey, you know who that dude looks like? Gargamel from the Smurfs. He's the Smurfs villain right there. Keep on going. Sky tube. Okay, there we go. Uh, boo, welcome. I'll send him on out with the lucky. <laughs> <laughs> By the way, he does that just to mess with y'all, just so y'all know. Uh, Abu, uh, Abu is a God-fearing man. 
So uh, welcome to the Hangout, Abu, and uh, we're always glad you bring the history. But Abu, tell us a story, not the whole story, okay? We can't spend every day on this, but tell us a little bit about why this picture we're looking at is important to GMS. Well, because the whole thing with Cornelius in Acts chapter 10, it's, I mean, uh, at least on the surface level, it seems obvious that it's referring to a person who's not Jewish, who's not an Israelite. And One West acknowledged that originally they had some sort of convoluted breakdowns to explain it, but they nonetheless acknowledged that Cornelius was not an Israelite. GMS, well not GMS because it wasn't called GMS yet, but Tahar was among the first to start pushing the idea that maybe Cornelius is an Israelite. And then he made it sort of a categorical imperative attacking all his rivals, you know, on, on this issue later on. And, uh, you know, others have come around on that one, but the point is he's made it like a big deal and he's fought with a number of people on it. So he's fought with Zabach on it, he's fought with uh, the House of David on it and so on. And just for those that may not know, Canadius was not an Israelite. You... Right, just so everyone's know. <laughs> just you know, so know. And you can ask him. Because you know what, man? Every time I read this, I'm shocked how anybody could dare say he's an Israelite because it says everything about him. I mean, it almost says his sandal size. That's how detailed it is. Right. And it does not say he's an Israelite. And when they try to say he's an Israelite, you know what they're really accusing the word of God of being unclear. They're right. accusing the word of God of not being able to say what it needs to say when it needs to say it. Because these words about him being an Israelite clearly are not there. Acts chapter 10 says this. There was a certain man. It could have said right there. There's a certain Israelite. Boom. Done. One West problem solved. There was a certain man in Caesarea called Cornelius, a centurion of the band called the Italian band. I'm just saying. Right. Oh, maybe, maybe he was Sicilian. He's an Italian band. Maybe he was with Frankie Valley in the Four Seasons. Sorry, bad joke. A devout man and one that feared God with all his house. By the way, that's technical language, that God-fearing language, to generally describe observant Gentiles or proselytes to Judaism, which gave much alms to the people. It didn't say to his people. Notice that? And prayed to God always. Now, there's more about this in there. You can look at it in Acts chapter 10. But they try to twist it because the whole message is that, yo, Gentiles are getting accepted into this covenant. It's not just with Israel anymore. And it was such a big deal. They had to deal with the ramifications of it in Acts chapter 15. So one Westers, Cornelius, was not an Israelite, no matter what pictures you draw on the YT politics blog. Let's keep on going. Right. You read that Acts 10, 22, and you read that Acts 11 and 3. He was an uncircumcised right. Gentile. Yep. Let me read this one. I'll join you in the camp later after my big toe is polished. Damn, Elder Tahar was right. <laughs> hey, what's up with that incomplete chart? He's holding. Abu, why is that chart incomplete, man? <laughs> oh, I, don't, I would assume he just got tired with the drawing. It was just, you know what that is, Tahar? Abu, that's the 1980s chart. <laughs> yeah, that's that's the, the one that uh, Abba Bivens taught that was just a hook before they started. Yeah, because in the 80s, they only had about seven of the tribes worked out, from what I heard from former one Westers. So that's the 1980s chart right there. <laughs> 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 okay, let's. Oh, here we go. We got to get the get on the juice. Oh, Thank man. you, rap bastard. I am the heaven devil. Revelation two nineteen. He got a. Why you got a black baby? Hey, wait a minute. This is interesting. If anyone has a history of pictures, there's lots of poster boards that GMS carries around when they got the white man and the white woman on the chain, and at the bottom of the picture is a little baby. Ah, okay. You know, right. have you seen that picture? Yeah, it's interesting. yeah. One time I saw GMS Bay Area promoting that picture, and the dude made a joke out of it. He said, nah, nah, we're equal, we're equal opportunity. Look, even the baby's in the chains. Yeah, yeah. An interesting uh, point about uh, Revelation 2.9. There's a video out there, it's an old one, but uh, of uh, Gabar, you know, one of the so-called apostles in GMS, admitting that, you know, that... The text is actually referring to Israelites, not to people who are pretending to be Israelites. It's, you know, that, that's been their popular application to say, you know, because it says of those who, are, who play, say they are Jews but are not, and that they say this, this is referring to like the, the Khazars and all that, that's their popular interpretation. But Gabar said that really, and I think he's actually right about this, it's referring to, to Israelites who are non-believers. And it's funny is that he, he applied the, the verse uh, being deceivers and yet true to himself, you know, because they're giving a false breakdown, which is still somehow accurate in their minds. I don't know. But it's an interesting concession that he made there on that one, that, that they don't really think it, it's referring to converts. Right. Well, check this out, Abu. So Revelation, by all accounts, is written in the first century. We could date it at 90 at the latest. Well, by the Hebrew Israelite reckoning. They were still cognizant of who they were as a people, right? Yeah, it's a millennium yeah, before the uh, yeah. Before those so this, this so-called you know Khazar conversion is supposed to go down. What's the date on that? They usually give approximately. Do you know? 
I think it's 8th century. I, the the text that the most famous text to describe it, the Kuzadi, I think that's 12th century though. But yeah, I think yeah. So how is Revelation two nine ten written to people who didn't even come around within Judaism until it? You know, it's like it don't make sense. It's totally relevant to the conversation. But then again, man, one Westerners aren't known for the biblical interpretation. Yeah, I mean, these are the same people who claim that Revelation nine is referring to, uh, you know, <laughs> the the Kaiser during World War One. So right. I mean, so their there ability you go. to make leaps with scripture, or, uh, especially the Book of Revelation, can get pretty. They can get pretty creative with that. And but nonetheless, they I mean, those who take that view would nonetheless say it's a prophecy. But it is interesting because I think if you try and take the text as having meaning within the first century, I think it's easier to link it with something like uh John 8 or something like that, Romans 9 6, Romans 2 29, you know, these kind of texts, in which case it falls more into this issue of disbelievers amongst the, the Jews, you know, which is not so much a, a question of lineage, because it would even apply to people who descend from Jacob. Hey man, um, this particular one, I think we got to skip, man. I can't, we can't really repeat any of this. Yeah. You guys can look at it later if you want at ytpolitics.blogspot.com, but it's too much. It's too much. And, th and there's, there's links to the Apocryphal Bible right under that foul thing, man. Okay, keep on going. <laughs> man. <laughs> Chop your mother effing head off. Okay, there's one. Let's get a little zoom in on these two. All right. These are some classics right here. Uh, That's actually close down to get it. I got you. I don't really know why they say so much stuff against Salafi Islam, because if you watch uh, these videos, when they go hard after, you know, Muslims and Arabs and stuff, they, they kind of all mix it together. Like they almost think Arab is synonymous with being Muslim. But, you know, they go hard after like especially IUIC. But I mean, it kind of looked like that's what he's trying to pull off right there. Yeah, yeah. that's that's exactly what they're there. There's a parallel there for sure. And in fact, there's a guy a lot of people forgot about him, but there was a guy I think he was in Oklahoma who he was a uh, like he wasn't actually a member of of Daesh of, of, of ISIS, but he was like an ISIS fanboy. Uh, he was calling himself Jakim Israel. I forget what his, his real name was, but it was a guy who murdered one of his uh, coworkers out in Oklahoma a couple years ago, and uh, even tried to behead her. And on his social media accounts, he was apparently a fan of GMS for a little while. What? And he was sort of hinting that he was he was never a member. Unless you know, I'm not trying to defame them or anything like that i'm just saying that from his social media accounts you can see he was watching their stuff and he was a fan and then all of a sudden he made this abrupt shift to being a salafi and you could see it happen on his social media presence his, his social media platforms where it happened like almost overnight where he went from being a gms fanboy to being an isis fanboy and i think that for me that provided insight into what kind of people are into gms and what kind of people are also into like the really vile forms of salafism like what you see with Daesh, with you know the so-called isis because right. i think he made that transition because it wasn't so much about theology it was about this is a the action a, a man with a dark heart who right. is attracted to the ideas of rapes and beheadings and so that attracted them to gms but it attracted him to isis more because while one group talks about it the other group is actually doing it you know right and, but I, I think there is that it, it, it says something about the hearts of some of the young men who are attracted to this kind of stuff let's keep on going down a false hope Forever peace and wrath. Forever peace. What's the false hope there, uh, Abu? If you had to guess, what's what's that trying to say? That little picture. Oh, you know that, that everybody's going to get along, right? That idea hey, that, that, that the nation's going to come together. Is that a cross the same thing? Yeah, yeah that, that might be. I don't know. It's, hey, uh, man, they love to draw blondes. Yeah. Yeah, man. Like, there's plenty of so-called white people that have brown hair. You know, there's a lot of black people that got dark skin that that have blonde hair naturally i don't think they know about it. i think they think all black people have like black kinky hair or something but um the funny thing about this well not the funny thing because it's obviously stupid but um I, I i'm not sure maybe maybe a bull know but but do do gms hold to because i know iuc does do they hold to that in the beginning when god created man he created adam and eve as well as the other nations like there in the garden do, do you know that Oh, I don't know. Uh, that one, I don't know. I do know that they they believe that Esau was uh, was Cain in the reincarnation. They, I know they're into yeah, that one. Yeah, they, yeah, and, they and, into that. And, and, and sometimes they even have this idea that uh, that somehow Esau lines up with the serpent as well. In yep, Genesis. so yeah. the Hawashai servants in Yisrael, who are an offshoot of GMS here in Phoenix, gave me that exact breakdown. They took it from the serpent to Cain to Esau. And they also had this thing about there's Adam and Eve, but they're like basically the Israelites. And then the other people are there's other people actually in the garden. And whenever it says trees, uh, trees represent nations. And they said so there there was other people in the garden. And so when Adam and Eve went to hide among the bushes, they were actually trying to hide among the nations. 
And that's how they, so they don't really have all people coming from Adam and Eve, according to my understanding. Right. That was the breakdown I got that I heard was an old One West breakdown. Let's keep on going down. By the way, that's bizarre. I'm just saying yeah. what I just said is bizarre. We're just saying this stuff like it's commonplace because that's how it is when you deal with this. Let's keep on going down. The God of love. Oh, hell no. <laughs> keep on yeah, going that's, down. That's why I brought that up because um, I know IRC, they, their, their explanation of what you just said, vocab is a little different, but they hold to that as well in terms of, you know, the other nations were there as well. Um, and, and so my, my question is always, well, it's obvious the scripture says sin had not come into the world till Adam fell. So, right. so prior to him falling, Adam, Eve, and them other nations, what what stand what stance were they with God? They were they were in perfect harmony with him. But but yet they're they're drawing pictures like this as, as if this is not what God desires. Not this. Well, I mean, this is definitely not I what God desires. Well, I mean, like, it looks I like mean, it's everybody. a three way. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I in God terms did. of in terms of unity, uh, right, right. this is what God desired, not not this this craziness, but right. uh, but but definitely that. And uh, so I don't think they think about that when they when they teach that whole you know uh, other nations were there in the beginning doctrine stuff. Zoom in on this. This Ike Turner one. Yep, brother Jake. Do you uh, understand yeah. what they're saying there? Yeah, because well, he beat up the black. <laughs> Yeah. yeah, so not everybody might. Can you tell people who Ike Turner is? Not everybody probably knows. Just real so, quick. So Ike Turner was the well, at least former husband um, and uh, uh, producer for uh, Tina Turner, um, the singer, as everybody know about. And she earlier in their marriage, or whatever, she went through a lot of domestic violence uh, or domestic um, abuse um, from Ike. Um, you know, extreme jealousy and all that kind of stuff that went on. And we know how the music business can be. Uh, so all that kind of stuff was going on. And he was getting crazy. Uh, he would he would beat her up literally. So we know that GMS has a thing against black women. They always quote the scripture from the apocrypha about the the wicked woman is a uh, is a portion to a wicked man. Uh, and they read all the scriptures about you know about the what they would deem as the loud black woman, right? Right. Let me tell you something right now. You guys, I don't know if you've heard me since I've been doing this thing, but actually a lot of times I speak warmly about Tahar because I kind of have like um like a soft spot in my heart towards him. Well, last night I just saw this video of the stuff he was doing when he was a little bit younger. A lot of that went away, man. Some of the sentimentality I had that maybe he was just misguided. And his video shows the way he was rolling when he was younger. And, uh, man, now I see where the younger guys in the GMS squad get it because they're just imitating the younger Tahar. Yeah, and then it's only like 10 years ago, to be honest. Sorry. Yeah. yeah, well, you said how many years? It's about 10 years ago. It came out it was about 2008, yeah. something like that. Yeah. So, yeah. So, uh, you notice there, Tina, has got the black eye in that picture. Black women, the fairy tale is almost over. And you got an old man punching a... Punching Blondie there in the mouth. Okay, let's keep. Yeah, uh, What's it say? Hey, wait. It says, "Don't let that knocker get rulership." Esau, the the black woman, with blonde hair. Oh, in back. Yeah. Don't let that knocker get rulership, Esau. <laughs> wow. Hey, you know what's interesting about this though? These one westerns, man. That Conor McGregor fight with Mayweather. They were all like saying that's a prototype of what's going to happen or something. Yeah, man. That, it was, that was our commander, man. They were big on that. So they're all about that. Let's keep on going although, down. Although, although to be fair, uh, Tahar thinks uh, Conor McGregor's an Israelite, so. Yeah. He talks too much ish. He talks ish like a Jake. That was his reasoning, by the way. Wow. He said he talks ish like a Jake. <laughs> Yo, man, they think John Travolta's in Israelite, bro. They think they think Al Pacino's in Israelite. Man, you know? that, 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 anyone just, they like, anyone they like. I, mean, I first anybody realized that cool. in the 90s. Bruce Lee. Just, I remember they were trying to explain, it wasn't specifically them, but I remember somebody in the 90s trying to explain to me with a straight face that Bruce Lee was an Ephraimite or something like that. And I was like, mm. yeah, man, that, right. that, that misconception of uh, who they think is Esau is all out of whack, man. I mean, I don't know if y'all seen those memes. Did y'all see those memes that they'll use of a, like this black woman washing this white woman in a tub and they'll, and they'll say like uh, something like, we taught y'all how to clean yourselves or something like that? I don't know if y'all ever seen that. Yeah, but um, I, I, I always, even when I was in the uh, in the movement, when I would see that picture, I always used to have, I always, just, I always scratch my head when I saw it because I'm like, well, wait, if the so-called white man was literally Esau, didn't Esau grow up in the household of of uh, of his father just right. as well as Jacob? So did they not know how to wash either? Right, right. And not only that, but guess what? Hey, Brother Jay, that means Esau was speaking Lashawan Kwadash. <laughs> right. <laughs> but I thought, I thought the white man couldn't get with this language, right? Right. I, I mean, that was a language or tongue they did not understand. Yeah, it's just too much, man. Yeah, it's just man. too much, y'all. Y'all, man, man, y'all got to get out of this thing, man. It'd be beautiful to have some testimonies of people that left GMS, man. Yeah, man. like, and I'm talking about stepping to the light of the gospel of Jesus Christ, not you know just leave and you're out of it because you realize they're crazy. And I'm talking about coming to the full light of the gospel. There's so much freedom, and uh, you know, <laughs> man, I don't know. The day's gonna happen. We, yeah. we, I'm praying and I'm looking for the day when the GMS members come out and they be like, hey. 
thank you for what you're doing. And uh, let me share the gospel now with my fellow, you know, compatriots. All right, let's keep on going down. Is this their version of Lake of Fire? Hey, you got to hit click on booty. Well, let's just watch a little bit of this. Oh, I thought we passed it. Me no, there's a booty. It. <laughs> this video is infamous, everybody. Turn the volume up if you can, Brother Jay. Yeah, let's, uh, this let me, uh, see if I can blow it up. <laughs> this is what made me say last time that this dude's like from Oakland. He was like two shorts mentor. Yeah, I'm going to classic. Yeah, that's, that's what it's going to be all about. Wait, wait, pause it. All this right. is what the Hebrew Israelites are waiting for in the kingdom of heaven. Do you see that? Yeah. It's, this says this is what the Hebrew Israelites are waiting for in the kingdom of heaven. And it's a dude with a bunch of lazy around him. What's it? Hit play so I can see the bottom part. And they will all be virgins, not like you nasty A sluts of today. Amen. Yeah. Oh, my goodness. I didn't know they had the virgins, man. They really ripping off Muhammad with this. Man. <laughs> That's what it's gonna be all about. The time comes. Yeah, I wanna uh, let you know about being being a <laughs> king. <laughs> like that? Hey, hold on, pause this. Can you rewind this beginning part? Because it's real funny. No one say anything. Can you get it a little bit louder? Because this is all look. Right. We gotta laugh. This is crazy. Listen, right. everyone, listen again. He's got background music. <laughs> Like, and he's got that Oakland funk from the 70s playing in the background. <laughs> he's got that little draw out, and he is saying some funny stuff. Play this one more time, man. Everyone check this out. This is crazy. Hey, hey thank you, Isaiah. Um, T, uh, faithful them always got to remind me, man. It's memes. I always say memes for some reason. Oh, it's all right, man. We know. Right. Yeah, yes. Yeah, this is why I do politics, yeah. Yeah, I want to talk about uh, booty. <laughs> yes. <laughs> That's what it's gonna be all about. All right, uh, yo, man, somebody needs to make a song out of this, man. <laughs> it won't be me. Come on, Come Jay. On, it won't be me, bro. <laughs> oh man. Hey, this is good. Check this out. Um, check this out. This is good. This is good. Oh, look at Nat Turner, man. Yeah, all right. No, oh, man. Keep on going down. I love this. This one on the bottom right here. God loves every FN body. Legion, he got the he got the Valentine's Day boxer shorts. Right. Out. <laughs> Revolution eleven eighteen and the nations were angry. <laughs> so, wow. Looks like he got the pain expansion pack. Yo, um that chart gets smaller every every picture. <laughs> I know, right? <laughs> hey brother Jay, how come they finally said revelation instead of revelations in that in that comic? No, no, man. <laughs> he finally got it right, man. Congratulations. Congratulations, YT Politics. You're the first GMS member in the history of GMS to say revelation instead of revelations. Yeah, man. He put a lot of thought into that one, man, with the whole He was like, wait a minute, I got it. There's no S. Okay. Right. With the love source. Yeah. He, All right, let's keep on going, one. man. Let's keep on going with this. Fly, I got next. Ten points. Damn. <laughs> 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 Yo, what's the his neck and head like that, man? Yo, man, they pulled the they literally pulled the rug, the carpet, the rug from underneath this guy, man. Wow, man. <laughs> wow. It looks like one of their little their suits. Yeah, it looks like he used one of his like capes to trip him up or something. Man. And at the bottom says GMS Gary, Indiana. But the point of it is that we want to expose this and say, look what you believe, GMS. And by the way, let me let me stop here right here. Do not put this on all Hebrew Israelites, number one. That's not fair. Number two, don't even put it on all One Westers. Now, One Westers do have some similar things to this, but I do think we should be specific and say this is GMS. And it might be interesting to, to ask a One Wester, do you think this picture is accurate? You know, death, the two-third blunt smoking knockers. I bet your two-third at believe in reincarnation now. Damn, Hebrew. <laughs> yeah, hey, this is kind of funny. Do you guys understand what he's saying? Abu, can you break it down? Because I think it's hilarious. It's actually kind of humorous in, in a perverted way. Well, What's he they, saying? A part of it, the reincarnation bit, is that they, they affirm reincarnation, and a lot of people mock them for believing that. And I guess the, the implication is here is that, you know, members, people who get killed will be brought back as something else. And so I guess that's the implication here. This guy has had his head chopped off, so he knows he's about to be reincarnated into another body, I guess. That's the implication. Hey, hey, that dude that got his head chopped off, why he still got his blood in his mouth and right. why his eyes... Why his eyes going sideways? Why are you talking? Yeah. <laughs> hey, man, this is just too much, man. All right, let's keep on going down. We got next. Man the F up. Let me ask you something. Zoom in on that little jar right there, Brother Jay. Is there a new soda coming out? You know, Esau Wait, Cola? So did, so did they chop his body parts up and then put them in the bottle? I see these bloody swords again. Right, right. Look at his eyes. He's looking at the 12 tribe chart. Yeah, he's yeah. like, it's true. <laughs> 
<laughs> I figured it out. Please let me die. Yo, he still got his vocal cords functioning, man. Right. <laughs> Bottle's vibrating. Yeah. Yo, hey, Abu, you want to say anything? Eh, not really. <laughs> this might be my favorite one. Now, check this out. Y'all know about bootlicking? IUIC never got into it, though, did they, Brother Jay? They they got to the bow down thing, but not the. I ain't seen nobody lick the boot yet. They, well, oh, they, they do. They, yeah, that, but that would just mean that they uh, they moved away from it because that goes all the way back to One West. You know, that was a One West thing, and it was amazing that they could find so many guys to do that. It was always very um, suspicious. You know, there's something very strange about it. And but like I said in the beginning, uh, a lot of what we see in, in these images is is doctrines that multiple can't share. So, but a lot of them care more about their image than GMS does. GMS is just more blunt with it. Um, you know, they. Other camps, like for example, I see may not be on the street saying lick my boot, but I've seen you know I've seen uh, the videos where you know you know so called white man bow down to them, um, yeah. and I guarantee if somebody did lean over to kiss their boot, there ain't nobody gonna tell them to get up. I right, right. Guarantee. Hey, it. check this you out. Know, you, you don't know have how... to guess. They've they've had it done lots of times. I mean, you know, back before all the splits, there was a bunch of videos they produced, and I'm guessing they've produced videos since then. It's but it's it's very uh, they, I mean, a lot of these guys are from New York, they so they have to know that the people that they're picking up off the street to do this on a certain level are people who take a certain gratification and being humiliated and, and it just makes the whole thing it just puts a very weird cloud over it that they seem to have just, no problem with that you know the hebrew israelites especially the one westerns love to accuse you the second you disagree with them of being quote suspect they love to say that it's kind of suspect which means you know you might be a homosexual because of whatever right let me just say something man having a man bow down in front of you and lick your shoe and enjoying it and commanding him to do it that seems kind of suspect yeah especially when it's these kind of men that you can find in new york and san francisco who enjoy being humiliated in public like that you know if they're enjoying it and the person on licking their boot is enjoying it they're involved in something rather uh yeah. rather creepy and right. weird you know or yeah. you know they're tripping on something and you know they thinking they're eating some macaroni and cheese or something <laughs> or you know that they just got out that special place where you get a little armband you know that you forget to take off you know what i'm saying all right, let's keep on going down on this. And then Forget the misspelling that says lick the dusk. Yeah, it's even more worse <laughs> than that's commanding people to lick their boots. But then the next thing coming out of their mouth is, we're cursed. We're in captivity. Right, right. Right. You see, you see how the lust goes hand in hand with their hatred, though. Yeah. The, the nudity, the implications of rape, the painted nails, the small hands, the lipstick, all of this see the thing is this is something that ties into with the, their fantasies and that's why you see some of these tropes in here because and i'm not trying to joke about it i, I think it's it's an insight into their psyche you know into their desires and stuff like that because that's what you're looking at here right Humil and, and look at this wow. look at the freaking irony right underneath that it says humility honor and self-sacrifice that's why we got to get up in this i look juxtapose this back to back wow mr tahar Mr. Vernon Brown, you should be ashamed of yourself. And remember, Tahar means pure, right? <laughs> Keep that one in mind every time you say yeah, Tahar. Yeah, let me drop this. Abu told me this today, everybody. Tahar's name in the Lashawan Kwadash is supposed to mean pure. Hey, hey, what did the ICGJC used to call him, though, Abu? They would call it for a while, like 10 years ago. They were, I remember they were producing videos against them calling him La'a Tahar. You know, not pure, La Tahar. You know, not pure. <laughs> That's what that was their Lashawan Kwadash, the other one Westerners called him not pure. Wow. That was about right that you find in a text, you have things that are repeated that's found in a text right. consistently, and then you have things that are just not coherent with each other because it seems as if somebody wrote, same thing with the New Testament, you're looking at how uh, that's done. Somebody wrote, walked away, maybe it came you're back. You're saying parts of the Bible are incoherent with each other? Yeah, I believe in divine revelation.